Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to Conversations with Yvonne Michelle. Hello, 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 good evening, good morning, good night, wherever you are. This is Conversations with Yvonne Michelle. We are talking hard hitting subjects. We are in lockdown, but you know what? Just because we're in lockdown, don't mean to say that we can't speak out and do what we need to do. Lockdown is a state of mind, guys, a state of mind. Yes, yes, yes. For those of you who are coming in on the replay, do remember to put your name, where you're calling or messaging from, your comments in the link below. Yes, 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 yes. We are streaming live on the www. For those of you who are coming in through LUR, good evening and welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, guys. Welcome back. I'm telling you, the days are going so quickly. I don't know what's going on. Every day just seems to go into the next. But you know what? Today's Monday. It is. It's Monday all day. How have you been? Come on, guys. Put some... Put some love, show some love on those Facebook pages. Show us some love because you know what? This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So today we are talking about faith. We, sorry, let me start again. We're talking about fear, faith, and the church in 2020. Now, this isn't about religion. This is about faith. This is about fear, which many people are living in right now. This is about faith. This is about building your faith in a different way. And this is also to discuss moving forward because the church is us. We are the church, the people. So we are moving forward today in a completely different way. This is not the church building. This is the church of the people. So we have two tremendous guests uh, coming live and direct to us. Um, we have Dr. Phil Noel from Soul 100 and we have Dr. Hugh Jackman as well, all the way from Spain. Yes, we're going global in our global business right now. So without further ado, I am going to invite these wonderful men into the room. And guys, whatever questions that you have, put them in the, pop them in the comments. We will read them out. They will answer your questions as best they can. Guys, I also had some music for you today. You know, I had this song from Churches UK. There is a new song out and it's a really lovely song. Wanted to share that with you today. It's a really peaceful song. Um, if you're feeling a little bit anxious, you're feeling a bit way, a bit woe, unsure of where you are, what you believe, where you're going to go to, what's going on in the world, this is the place for you to be. Sit tight, get yourself a glass of water, get yourself a coffee, tea, glass of wine, a beer, whatever it is you want. Take a seat and sit down and listen. Clear your mind. Clear your mind of all of the, the talking that's been going on, all the news, all of that stuff, all of the COVID-19 stuff. I want you to clear your mind just for these two hours and, and let get ready to absorb some goodness. Get ready to absorb some peace. Get ready to absorb some joy. This is a different show. This is a different show to what we normally do, but it's time. It's time, it's time, it's time. So those of you just jumping on, remember that you leave your comments in the feed. We're taking questions and answers. We're having a conversation today about fear, faith, and the church in 2020. So without further ado, I'm going to bring in our guests. I'm going to bring in Phil. Hi, Phil. How are you? Hi. I'm good. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone that's watching. Thanks for inviting us to the show today. Fantastic. We're going to find out about Phil shortly. I'm going to bring in our next guest. Here we go. There we go. 
Hi, Hugh. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you? Apart from the fact that I've just come back from my first bike ride in, in probably three months. Well, to be honest, it's more like three years. So, But apart from that, they've just lifted some of the uh, restrictions here in Spain. But apart from that, I'm still alive after my bike ride, so I'm okay. Good. How are you? I'm wonderful. <laughs> I am wonderful. I have been, I've done walking out, I've went out for my first walk um, a couple of days ago. I haven't been out of the house for is it nine weeks, nine, ten weeks. Yeah. I went out first time and then I did a show yesterday, um, a, a relationship show on a TV network and I went in and we had all the social distancing stuff and it was real good fun, really enjoyed it and now I'm back home until next week. So it's all good, all good. So I'm glad that everybody's here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, guys, so first of all, let's let's just find out a little bit about you guys because those who are watching will not know who you are. So if I start with, um, I'm going to start with with you actually um, because you are out there in Spain. So you are our international guest this evening. <laughs> so if you'll tell us a little bit about not Phil, Hugh even, tell us a little bit about you, what you do. And um, you can also just tell us a little bit about, um, you're an author as well, so you can do a little bit of plug-in as well. <laughs> well, uh, thanks for inviting me on tonight. Um, basically, what do I do? Um, I, I have a number of things that I do, but basically most of the things that I do are involved around the gospel. I say most, not all. Um, so um, I'm here in Spain in my own studio, which I've set up uh, for the purpose of making evangelistic programs. Um, and that's what I'm doing right now from Spain. Um, I'm an author, as you said. Uh, I'm writing uh, my fourth book currently at the moment. I'm trying to write books that are relevant to, to people who are going through real situations and uh, and. Uh, experiencing real fear, real problems, especially now, very relevant now. Um, I have been involved in the gospel. I've been a pastor. I'm not a pastor now, although people say you 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 never lose your 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 you know your robes, as it were. Um, but um, I don't say that I'm a pastor now. But I'm I'm a pastor of a different sort, if you like, uh, because I work in media. So my role is. Um, I help a number of ministries and uh, uh, channels uh, to be able to broadcast internationally. That's pretty much what I do. Uh, there's a long list of other things. I'm also like Dr. Phil. I'm also a psalmist, bit of a songwriter. And I, you know, whatever I set my hand to, I, I pray it prospers. But um, yeah, I mean, the list is probably a bit too long and boring for your guests as well, I should think. Okay, so it's good to hear, good to hear. So, you know, those of you who are listening um, on the www. Dot, this, this, this young man here has got his hands in lots of pies and knows about media. And this is something that we need to know about. We need to be able to facilitate our own programs, I believe, that's my opinion. And um, so you are definitely somebody that people within our community should know. Oh, definitely. I mean, one of the things that I'm involved with at the moment is we are, um, I'm also involved in the hair and beauty industry. And what I'm trying to do is get um, a launch going of a, of a new channel um, that looks at that particular industry. So we're working very closely with Afro Hair and Beauty, for example, which is the exhibition, which I also, I do some, I consult for as well. Um, so so it, for me, it's, it's great to have a feeling not only of what's happening in the church, but also what's happening where people are. And I think that's that's kind of where your heart is, Michelle. Um, sorry, Yvonne. Your surname is like a first name, so I may, I may make that mistake every now and then. But, um, it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry. It, it, it's great to be in the church and it's, it's the place to be. I mean, I, I, you know, I will say that all night long to your guests. You need to get to know Jesus Christ. You need to be in the church, but at the same time, you need to be relevant and you need to be real and and, mm -hmm. and don't be so church that you lose track of where people are at because then you miss the opportunities to evangelize and you miss the opportunities to speak into their lives. So um, 
You know, people don't come to the church um, just because they don't get up one morning and only go to church. Sometimes the church has to go to people. So the great thing about the things that I'm involved in is wherever possible, I try to bring in the voice of faith. And that's what's, for me, very, very satisfying for what I do. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to come back to some of that yeah. you said a bit later. I'm going to introduce our next guest, which is Pastor Phil. Yeah. So, hi, Phil. How are you? I'm good. Good to see you, Yvonne, as you were saying earlier. The smile is still there. She's great. Still, yeah. still here. So, the great God, it's still here. Looking so, forward to calling on the voice. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, the voice is still there, you know. That's still good. there. These are... Uh, a little bit of an opportunity. It's coming out. Mm. It's coming out. Good, good. Something. Working on something. I'm always working on something. You know that, Phil. That's the idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know that. So, Phil, tell us a bit about you and Soul 100 TV. Okay. Well, um, yes, yeah, everyone. Know. My name's Philip Noel. Um, married second time, obviously, because of the passing of the my first wife, which means uh, we parent seven now who are all grown up and so therefore they have the license to talk back you know there's uh there's, we need a manual for that that's a whole nother thing um but certainly myself i'm a preacher of the gospel um driven by evangelism but also driven by music but all to the glory of god um so what i'm doing at the moment is something i've been working on for a little while is building soul 100 television um and it's specifically for se send sending taking carrying uh, facilitating the good news of Jesus Christ, but in a creative way. Um, in between that, obviously, I preach in a few different churches. I was blessed yesterday to preach at the New Testament Church of God in Tutin um, at their online service. So that was a new experience. Um, so, yeah, we got that under the belt. But um, God is doing the thing. We're, we're in the pandemic season. And so even though I was doing lots of things, I'm not sure if they really matter as much. I'm reminded in this season while we're in the lockdown that um uh, there was a time when the, the you know the churches or the people in church had to run for their lives because Saul from Tarsus was chasing them, and they were in what we call a lockdown then. And it used to be like um, every door was being banged. A man had been knocking the door saying, "Open up in the name of Caesar." We heard a rumor that you're preaching, praying, singing, worshiping God, and you know we got a, a, a warrant for your arrest to crucify you. So I I, I liken now to that. So we're fighting to get the good news of Jesus Christ out. And we pray that what we're doing will be relevant. And that's what Soul 100 Television is doing. It's another way of getting the gospel out, but without fear. I don't know if we're still online or should I still be firing? Um, are you there, Yvonne? I think I've lost you all, but okay. So yeah, well, I'll take this opportunity. We're waiting for Yvonne to come back in. You know, um, what else do we do? Um, we're looking yeah. at. It. Yeah, I can hear you now. But <laughs> I was just about. To, I was just yeah. about to give a message. <laughs> you know what happens? So I'm controlling everything here, and I'm using mm. some software, mm. and uh, this is not Zoom. So um, I took myself out so that the viewers could see you more clearly. Okay. Okay. And so I'm not realizing that I'm talking, but they can't hear me. Okay. So know yourself, be back on screen. Okay. <laughs> that's all. Well, that's that's all. Right. So I can hear you. So okay. Phil, hmm. thank you so much. I'm just going to say, those of you who are listening, leave your questions in the thread, in the feed. Leave your questions and our guests will answer you as best they can here. So um, guys, so I'm going to bring you both in now. There we go. So today we are talking, because Phil, you just mentioned the word faith. Mm -hmm. so, fear, sorry, fear. T today we want to talk about fear. We want to talk about faith. Or we want to talk about where the church is in regard to that. So let's start off with talking about the fear that that's around. Um, now, obviously, we're living in, as you put, Phil, the pandemic season. This is now I, I really don't want to get in inner to the COVID thing. But we do have to kind of skirt around it. And the reason why I don't want to get into the COVID thing is because everyone else is talking about it. And to be perfectly honest, I'm sick of hearing about it. I know people are dying. It's really, really sad. Um, it's distressing. 
And I think too much of that can start to play with your mental health. And I think we have to be mindful with all of the stuff that's coming from the media. It's, all, it's everywhere, everywhere you look, it's there. So I'm like this. I will see it when I want to see it. I'll hear it when I want to hear it. I don't have to hear it every day because the doom and gloom doesn't do us any good. Not in our not in our psyche anyway. So and, and and I don't want to be disrespectful to anybody who has lost or those who are working tirelessly to help those who are in need and those who are sick. But that's just a preference for me. I've, I've you know, I've had so much of it. And so and also I'll just say this. I run groups. So I have different um, groups of women, men, whatever. And so many are struggling they're struggling with fear. And that's because of what's coming um, from the outside in. So I really wanna to touch on this in terms of um, to bring some form of comfort and also to reassure people that all is not lost. You know, and I and I just thought that it would be a key thing to put, to bring you two key members of the Christian community on this show to kind of bring some calm, bring some solace, bring some peace, some comfort, and also just to express what the word of God says, why they don't have to necessarily worry the way that they have been. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. <laughs> so guys, I'm gonna leave it open, guys. Whoever wants to jump in first, you know, we wanna talk, but let's address the fear first. And then we will go to faith. Or you can mix some blends up to you. I don't want to see what to do. Well, yeah, we, we'll always want to give weight for the other. That's the way we are as uh, as brothers. <laughs> we know each other very well, Phil. Um, yeah. But but maybe I'll, I'll kick off just with a thought about fear. Um, the, when the <laughs> lockdown began uh, back in, um, on the for me, it began on the 8th of uh, March seems like a long time ago now. What what date are we now? So I don't know how long have we been in lockdown. Fourth of May, so March, May, April, May. This is this is a long time. Three, you know, maybe sixty days or so. My math isn't that good, but anyway, um, when this lockdown first began, I had an experience. I was um, I was sitting in my apartment here uh, on the settee. Just actually, I was just chilling out. Um, because when you do as much as I do in terms of um, um, technical work and so on and so forth, sometimes you just need to unwind. So I was actually playing a game. I was just chilling out, playing a game, you know, online with family and stuff like that. And then I realized um, it got to about two o'clock in the morning. I switched off the game and I was sitting there. And while I was sitting there, um, I had a sudden... Uh, I, fear came on me. Um, so this was like the first week of lockdown, right? So just after one week, what I felt, and it literally just, it like it, it was like it swept in the room and it was like it just took me over for a second. I felt I experienced fear, real deep fear. And um, I sat there and thought to myself, what in the world? Where, where's that coming from? Now, I'll tell you what happened with me. Now, I'm going to speak a little bit spiritual. So some of you who are, who are who are listening, some of you are going to get this, some of you are not going to get it, but but that's okay. You know, I don't mind. I, I still have to say what happened. What? But while I was sitting there, I started to think, what, what is this fear? What is this? What, what is it I'm feeling? And I, I heard from the Lord while I was sitting there. And what the Spirit of the Lord told me was that at that point in time, in that instance of time, just at that very moment, that the, the, the spirit of fear or the force of fear in the earth had reached such a point because of COVID-19 um, that he was allowing me to feel the fact that people at that point were letting go very much. Many people were letting go of any little faith that they had, and it was being taken over by fear. And so what I experienced in that moment was, if you like, a prophetic sense of the fact that the balance had been tipped. Something had gone wrong in the world. Fear was now out, out, out. It was out fearing faith. So we had a, we have a situation where all of a sudden 
I knew that I had to start ministering into the area of fear. And, and anybody who's walking in the Holy Spirit, anybody who's really listening to the voice of God would have immediately sensed that from the Lord, that the first uh, battle that we need to fight in this battle is against the spirit of fear, because the spirit of fear is going to come in different waves. And throughout this whole COVID thing, it has come in, in, in certain waves. The first wave of fear was people fearing catching the disease. The second wave of fear was whether they would die or not when they catch the disease. The third wave of fear now is like, you know, if I lose my job, you know, how can I feed my family? So every level of this thing has brought another level of fear. So it's been fear on top of fear on top of fear. And so from a spiritual point of view, I'm very aware of the fact that the enemy is, and, and whether you believe in God or not, you at least would at least be able to admit that there's evil and evil and good, evil versus good. And what's happening is that this fear that is all around the world is stoking up the, if you like, the force of evil, right? So, I mean, what I'm trying to do with the programs I'm doing is apply some balance and to let people know from our standpoint that, yes, there are things out there that are dangerous to mankind. And there are some serious problems. But if you are walking in relationship with God and, you know, this, you know, I'll probably hand over to, to the good Dr. Phil on this point, because when you are walking in relationship with the spirit of God, it's not that you, you it's not that you won't have to go through stuff. You're going to go through stuff where Christians go through stuff. Believers go through stuff. But it's an entirely different application when you're walking with the spirit of God, because when the spirit of God is walking in your life, when you go through that, that fear episode or that situation you're going through, you are not going through it alone. That's the big difference. And when you have the Lord with you, then I can tell you that things may, you know, somebody said 80% of the things that we fear never actually happen, you know? So, so we end up fearing a bunch of stuff and expending a bunch of energy when on things that are not going to happen. The Lord Jesus said, why take you thought about tomorrow? You know, today has sufficient evil of itself. So that's from a spiritual st standpoint. I'll hand over to Phil. I got some practical things to say, but I think, you know, just to start us off and maybe hand to Phil and see what his thoughts are. Hi, Hugh. Thanks. Thanks for that. I'm, I'm allowed to call you Hugh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, I should yeah. say, um, yeah. be very close for a long time. Let me just um, play with the narrative for a second. Um, one of the things I like to ask a question is, um, we as human beings um, have been facing death ever since Cain and Abel. Wow. It, death is not new to us as a race, yeah, part one. So if you look at what we actually do in life, it, one of the most used scripture all the time, it happens at funerals. You always hear them say, death wears the sting and grave wears the victory, right? And it's almost like, after the event, if that makes sense. So the, by flipping the script and saying, okay, what's out there now? Everyone's, what we frightened of, you know, because you know the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. I started to tap into what is the power, what is the love, and what is the sound mind? So he gave us a clue by saying Jesus coming and dying for us. He took the sting out of death and the victory out of the grave. So instead of us talking about that, after someone dies, maybe we should all be shouting about it while we are alive. So then it can actually, uh, how can I say, infiltrate our minds and get down to our heart. Because, you know, it says that um, if this, what is this thing of, out of death they're talking about? What is the victory in the grave? It's, he's really saying that when this body gives up, and it will give up, it will give up by heart attack, aneurysm, car crash, uh, stroke, dementia, uh, you know, paralysis, you know, uh, a blockage in the valve in the heart, it is going to stop. So one of the things that I want to help people with is, like, instead of us pushing it under the carpet, which is what we do, we tend to, like, go, oh, yeah, one day I'm going to pass, you know, and I'll get a little insurance policy now and then, and I'll, I'll pay for it, and then when it's too expensive, I'll stop paying for it, and then I'll start paying the direct debit again, maybe. But we tend to put it on the shelf, but maybe we should just... Head at, head at it, straight on. Maybe we should run at it like David ran to 
Goliath with a, with a sword in our hand, putting fear behind us, as God said to Joshua, be strong and courageous. So just for a moment, I thought, you know what? This thing is going to happen. So we need to prepare for it. And what's the best, what's the best antibiotic? What's the thing that's going to cause us the least pain is look at what the word says. And the word says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 56 and 55 says, Oh, death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. So I thought, you know what? I'm, I'm tired of this death thing. Uh, Yvonne, you've experienced it. I've experienced it. Dr. Hughes experienced it. And it, when it came, it shook us, didn't it? It shook up our households and, you know, we, we, we sat down and like, what was going on? But I thought, if I knew what I knew now, and I knew then, I remember when my late wife passed, one of the first thing I did within 10 minutes of her passing, I gathered all the children and I insisted that they praise the Lord. You know why I did that? To take the sting out of the death. Literally, by just saying, listen, with tears and noses running, you know, it was a surprise death. It was an aneurysm. You know, I'm coming home to eat food like I normally do, but she had gone it in an instant, you know. And so by praising God, we took this thing out of death. So I'm encouraging people now to say, listen, we know this is going to happen. Let's praise God now. Let's, let's use that weapon that we've put away. We've saved it for the day when we all dress up in a suit and a tie and we walk in and we keep our heads down and, and someone says a eulogy, etc. And the pastor gets up and says, uh, there's, you know, grave, where's your victory? Death, where's your sting? And I just want to put it out there that maybe that's the first thing to start tabling. You know, I heard, I heard the audible voice of God uh, last week, about a week and a half ago. Tell a lie, last week. And I heard it very clearly. And the voice said, a nation that prays is a nation that is humbled. And this season is causing, at the moment, I hear one in four people are calling out to God. And I think it's an opportunity for us to take the sting out of death and the victory out of grave forever, if everyone would just call out and pray to God. So that's, that's really the first thing I've started to address and share with everyone is like, use it today you know why prepare to deal with a problem tomorrow when we can deal with it today that's the first thing you know and because this the covid is taking people it is bringing distress you know and it's it's, it's the thing is it's everywhere worldwide so flip the narrative is the first thing i'm saying just change the script and recognize that you know, look my hair is changing color now um we was talking earlier yvonne you know maybe i should touch a little bit of diet you know, for two ninety nine to keep the little youthful looks on. But I'm getting on. And, and, you know, but my mind is still thinking like a young man, but the mirror is telling a different story. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go. I'm, you know, hey, you know, I'm going to go. I'm holding on by everything I know. With, um, vitamin C, vitamin D, banana, uh, cranberry, you know, water with lemon, etc. But it's going to come to time. So really, we need to see this as a junction. We need to see this as a a petrol station, an MOT station, where we mm. juice up and get our engine correct to go on to what's really out there. You know, um, Raiders of the Lost Ark, I'm reminded of Harrison Ford, always got, trying to find the exit, exit, what they call it, the thing that gives them life forever. Mm. Yet yeah, it's in front of us. And, that, and it only comes into light to us if we actually believe the word. That's why Nicodemus, who came to Jesus by night, it said, how can a man be born again? He said, you have to be, you have to be born again. He questioned, and Jesus said, by water and spirit, because that's the only way we can enter. I always say the only way you can taste the mango is suck it. And the only way to suck this mango of taking the sting out of death and the victory out of grave, the grave is literally, you know what? You tried everything else. Um, we're in the middle of a crisis. Call on the name of Jesus and get a surprise. Okay. I like the end bit, Phil. My question to you is, is if if you have no relationship with, with mm. Christ, if you have no real belief pattern, mm. um, you know, we we you know, I was raised in the church, so I, I I am fortunate, I am blessed to have friends like yourselves that I can tap into. But if if you have no kind of connection with God and you're talking about okay let's let's do it differently and let's let's 
you know, let's, let's just embrace death. How do you do that if you don't have that relationship or that guarantee um, with God? How, how because that, that's a difficult, I think this, if you're a non-believer, I think to just suddenly say, well, I'm going to die anyway, so hey, I think sometimes that can be really difficult. What would be the process of the shift in the mind? Because we, you know, we are going towards the next part of this, which would be faith. So, so how would you encourage or or lead somebody to having the faith that you and I and and um, you have displayed? How would you do that? Um, well, it's interesting. You know, there's a there's a verse in the Bible where it talks about um, the fact that God has put the search for eternity in all of us anyway. Um, maybe I'll phrase it this way we've got a conscience that actually works and every one of us has this conscience but not everybody listens to it and if everybody in this time or in life just took the time to hear the conscience they'll hear that they're inside which we know is their their soul talking to their spirit is actually looking for god to, but we don't really admit it so people aren't as far away from actually getting the answer as they actually think. That's one of the first things. The second thing, there, there isn't, the, the formula is not like this, you know. It, I'll, I'll do this. If I was God and you were God and we made the world and all the humans, we set the rules because we're God, right? So it just so happened that the rules that are being set, it says faith comes only by hearing. And the thing that we hear is the word of God. And it said, you know, how are they going to hear if the preacher's not there to actually preach it? So basically, that is the formula. And, you know, it may not fit in everybody's sphere, but that's where they get the faith from. Faith comes by hearing. For example, they're hearing your program now. And hopefully somebody will hear something that will trigger faith. So we would be imposters or liars if we tried to give you a formula that was very far away from the truth. You know, this is this is what the truth is. You know, I heard I got my faith strong in a police cell. You know, as you know the story when the police put a brooch in my pocket and I ended up in Kilburn Police Station. And when I called out to God from inside the police station, I called out this way. I said, "The God to whom my mum prays to." I didn't know. Him. I just said, "The God to whom my mum prays to." I want to do a deal with you. I want to do a deal. If you get me out of this police station for a crime I didn't commit, mugging a lady I never even met, being threatened with 10 years in prison for something I didn't do, I would serve you for life. Now, God knew I was hard of hearing. So for my particular case, he had to shake up my life, which was running along, you know, sort of like thinking about God once a week and then carrying on. But he got my attention. And all I'm submitting to everyone is the pandemic has got everybody's attention and i don't think we should waste this opportunity it's a chance to question things but the police cell was horrible you know it was a piece of wood the toilet hadn't been flushed for six months the breakfast they gave me looked like it had been spatting and i didn't know god i didn't i just i heard someone say they had a relationship with god and the person that had the relationship with god i couldn't reach her at the time so i was on my own so the first thing i'm telling everybody is call out so God, if you don't know his name, say, the one who made me. Um, I heard a rumor there was a guy called Jesus walking up and down the earth. I heard he healed people. I think his name was, J -J -J -J. oh, I got it. It was Jesus. Jesus, you know, do something because we're fighting for our life. And that's what I'm saying to everyone. There's no formula, but no matter how we do it, we'll end up back calling on the same God, the only God, the only true God, the only one that's alive. He's not stone. He's not marble. He's not a tree that man made and man planted. He's a spirit. He's loving and he has ears to listen. So, yeah, call out, you know, <laughs> what you got to say, Dr. you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm, Phil, I'm always in agreement with what you say. You know, the thing is, um, I was interested in, in some of what you were saying, particularly because um, the thing that I've noticed over the years as a believer is that, the faith principles, I mean, going back to Yvonne's question, um, you know, how do you, uh, how do you just overcome fear? You know, if you've, uh, 
as you said, Dr. Phil, you know, um, you know, we got to face up to this thing. You know, we're gonna we're going to um, we're gonna have to leave at some point. But the fact is that people are afraid of death. I'm, I'm reminded of the scripture, which talks about the Lord Jesus. You know, it says in Hebrews chapter two, verse fourteen, "Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same, uh, that through death he might destroy him." who had the power of death, that is the devil. And this is the part I wanted to zone in on and release those who, who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. You hear that? Through fear of death, they were all their lifetime subject to bondage. This is what you're talking about, Dr. Phil, is that people are in bondage to this thing called death. I remember when I was a pastor and I was asked to do funerals and I've done quite a few of them, um, uh, I'd never ever experienced such a captive audience as when you're doing a funeral. When you when you are taking a funeral, and you are speaking the word of God, I tell you what, every single eye in that room is focused upon you, um, and that is because this is a point where people, you know, people can overcome a lot of things in life. They can, you know, I mean, you get sick, maybe you can, you know, you can find a doctor to heal you. Maybe, you know, you, you, you've got uh, some kind of problem like diabetes, you can change your diet. There's lots of things that people can do in this world to get past issues that we have to face. But the one thing that people, there's a big, huge question mark over, and that is this thing called death. And so going back to Mich um, Yvonne's question, how does a person without faith in Jesus, how do you overcome death? Well, it's difficult, but there are some principles in the Bible, and as Dr. Phil was speaking, I was thinking, even if people don't have the faith that, let's say, Dr. Phil or myself or Yvonne has, let's say they don't, but they hear something sensible that makes them say, uh, you know, actually, would that make sense? Then what that does is it sows a seed for the gospel. And when people hear a seed for the gospel, they then start to respond and um you know, they open themselves. They say, well, maybe he was right about my health. Maybe he was right about my job. Maybe he's right about this death thing. And that's one of the reasons why when ministers speak, it's important that, you know, we weigh up what we're saying and have a think about what the ramifications are for people who are listening. And what I'm saying is that the principles in the word of God work. They actually work for everybody. Um, because God, you know, the, the Bible talks about the sun shining on the just and the unjust. And I think really essentially what that means is the principles of God work for everybody. You know, if if somebody lives a life that is uh, particularly, let's say, um, evil towards other people, I mean, you may not have be a Christian by faith, but you know when someone's evil or not, right? Uh, you know, if somebody said what goes around comes around, most people are going to agree with that. Um, the Bible says there's seed time and harvest. So actually, the what goes around comes around is actually a biblical term that's been kind of reworked. And what you find is that there, there are many words of wisdom that sort of circulate this world that you think have nothing to do with the word of God, but actually they have everything to do with the word of God because the root of everything good, the Bible says the root of everything good has to be a good God. And so what I'm saying is, fear basically has a root and this is the, this is the practical advice that i would give to anyone who's listening or watching and that is fear has a root now when you are feeling fear it's very much worth at trying to analyze yourself because what a lot of people do with fear is they just accept it you know i'm afraid I, i'm in fear so they just accept the fact that they're in fear but they don't analyze what fear actually is have you ever taken the time to actually analyze what fear is? This thing that makes your heartbeat go faster, stress, whatever it might be. What is fear? It's, it, this is where the human being needs to start asking the questions. Is Am I supposed to be like this? Is my heart supposed to be beating fast? Should I be experiencing this thing called fear? And the truth of the matter is you shouldn't. 
because God didn't design us to be experiencing this thing called fear. Fear came in, if you go all the way back to the book of Genesis in the, in the Bible in the beginning, that's where you see fear, fear first come in. After uh, Adam's walking around in the garden, listen, Adam's tr trotting around the garden with God. The Bible said that God came down in the cool of the day and walked around with Adam. They just walked around and chilled and talked together. But, you know, after sin came in, all of a sudden, it, you hear this word for the first time in the Bible, I was afraid. I was afraid. So you see, fear is a product of sin. It's actually a product of the sin condition in life. And so I say this, this is where it began. It began with, with, uh, the, 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 with man's fall. That's where fear comes from. And when man, as Dr. Phil was saying, is restored into a relationship with the Lord Jesus, or a relationship with God, what happens is that fear is, or the bondage to fear is now dealt with. It doesn't mean that you might not feel fear from time to time, but the uh, you even though you feel the fear, you have the answer automatically in you. And I want to ask this question to your viewers before I, I hand back over. Um, if you really think about fear, there's something that and I used to like to say this when I was pastoring. If you really trace fear, every single fear that you have, no matter what it is, fear of losing job, fear of no money, fear of not being able to eat tomorrow, fear of dying, fear of a disease, any fear, if you trace fear, every single fear, I promise you, if you do this exercise, get a piece of paper, write down what happens if my worst fear happens. And you keep going and keep asking yourself, what is the ramification of that? What is the ramification of that? What is the ramification of that? Eventually you are gonna arrive at death. So that's why the Bible principle always is true. At the root of every fear in every heart is death. And so if death is dealt with, actually fear is dealt with. Because what happens is you have an answer for fear. No matter what's going on, it's not going to kill you. It's not going to kill you. So I'm kind of like, I'm like with Phil in the terms of you've got to accept it. But at the same time, you've got to accept at the same time, the fact that God has dealt with this thing and that you have a victory over it now as you're walking through it. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me um, because I am a believer. Yeah. Um, and, and my concerns are, you know, let me just put this out to the audience. My concerns are this, is that, Whilst we know about Christ or whilst we have a relationship with him, there are many others that don't. And during this COVID uh, season, so people have, have committed suicide, people have, have lost their minds. You know, this thing is affecting people in such a dramatic way. And for me, the, for me, I'm going to say that the church... The organisation has just been very, very quiet. And I just see this as an, a, an opportunity to actually be out there and touch the lives of the people who matter, the, not the matter the most, because we all matter. But, you know, it was Christ that said, go out, go ye out there and, and make disciples, you know. And I just don't see that happening now. And I'm just like, well, what is what's going on people are dying people are scared they're full of fear they have no um no hope and so i'm like well how do we actually reach these people we can only we only have technology now we're in our homes you're in your home you're in spain phil you're in your home i'm in my home all we have is this and so what I do see is this, and, and, and so I'll just broaden up the conversation a bit. What I see is this. I see a lot of churches, whether they're stateside, Caribbean, Europe, England, wherever, and they are focusing on their own, their members, their running church for themselves. I agree with that. But Joe blogs down the road. My neighbour next door is in pain. Yeah. And that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. Can I can I can I say something on that? Um, which would which would help? Okay. Um, two things. Just to just to, to bench off our last conversation about fear. It's important to remember that God didn't give us the fear, right? That's important to remember. What He did, He gave us the solution. Mm -hmm. Now, to help with the the lead or the question, as in, what is the church doing? Um, the church is actually doing a lot. They're not just sitting online. And I, I can get. I brought deliberately information that would break that myth and kick it into touch. 
But it's important to um the it's important to remember um because you quoted Ethan when you said um you're a believer. Doctor Hughes a believer. Philip's a believer. But I wasn't born a believer. Right. Was I was exactly where they all are or were. I'm saying work because by the time they finish the program, something is going to change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not that like we're walking and saying we were born perfect. We are listen, I was expelled from primary school, expelled from junior school, chucked out of college, chucked out the PRU, had my running with the, the what we used to call Babylon in the time. What I'm saying is <laughs> but so somewhere along the line, yeah, I ran out of answers. I still remember when I was working in a minicab office and a guy was high on drugs and he came in and he, he put a seven inch knife to my neck. And uh, the guy that was trying to help me, every time he came forward, the knife was going into my neck even deeper, right? So I had to connect with God and get an idea how I could get this guy to release me so I could come out unscathed. So guess what happened? It's on it, on it, and I'm here now. So God did it. When we're on a plane, as soon as the plane goes, ooh, everybody who doesn't believe, all of a sudden their mind goes, oh God. Yeah, it's in them. There, there's a trigger in there that mm. some of us just aren't willing to press the button yet. But mm. there's a button that is being built into every single one of us that when that big, big danger come in front of us, mm. we then called out to something greater than us. So I just really wanted to say that we didn't start this way. We were backed into a corner. And one day we said, you know what? I can't do it. I just, I need you to help me, God. And guess what? He's so good. He helped us. And we're the living proof. Now, going on to the question about what is the church doing? I want to, I want to use one church as an example. I'm um, Holy Trinity Brompton. Um, Everything they're doing is not inside the church. Um, for example, the food banks that are there, um, the counsellors, you know, people who are qualified, professional, who are now talking to people in their homes online, giving them free sessions, some of them, you know, etc. That's their living, but they're actually taking those hours to talk people through exactly what they were doing in their office and one to one. There's money being collected to take food to people who haven't got any food. And so I thought, rather than pretend it's actually happening, I thought, hey, you know what? Let me pick up a piece of paper, um, show some examples. This is one program and it's called Love Thy Neighbor, right? It's a Holy Trinity Convention. And I investigated it before coming on the show. And what there's a connection, the thing that I like best is, all of these churches, for example, are all over the country, and I'll, I'll give you the details after, Yvonne, but there's, yeah, churches, there's church after church that is going out into the community and helping people. If they've got no food, they're bringing food to their house. You know, they're, they're giving them support. You know, they're giving them counselling. What I'm saying is they are actually doing, and I deliberately didn't mention my own church because that would be really that acutest point. But mm -hmm. there are lots that are doing it. And I think what's happening is the, the government or the TV stations don't want to give this information out that the church is doing. What they want to concentrate on, being driven by the adversary, is that the church is not doing anything. But they are doing things, you know. And uh, we can provide all this information. At least 80 churches are brought information on, which is spread about the UK, that have made themselves the calling card. There's phone numbers where people can call them day and night, that they'll pray with them on the phone. You've got no food, they'll bring food. You know, they don't have to come within two meters. They can chuck the bag into the garden. You know, there's counselors on hand. You know, there's a lot actually happening. And I, I think um, it's awareness is the thing really. It's just the awareness that needs to be there. You know, and I think this program is a good start to actually um, changing the narrative. Well, um, I, I don't know if it went silent because he wanted me to come back on that point, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, yeah, I agree, Phil, very good points. Thanks for bringing those because um, I am aware of the work that some churches are doing. I'm wondering whether um, Yvonne was more alluding to the proximity and visibility within maybe her own community, maybe, I don't know. But the thing that I was going to say was that there are some things that the church can do. Um, I think, um, yeah, in addition to the things that Phil mentioned, that the outreach stuff and 
uh, feeding people and so on and so forth, which is which are all fantastic things. By the way, you're right, Phil. I, I had a call from somebody. But here's the interesting thing. The call came via media. So I was doing my Facebook Live program, and somebody saw that, and they said they've got an auntie who lives in Wellingborough, and could somebody visit? And thank God I was able to call a church pastor in Wellingborough that I used to know, contact him and said, this lady, she's isolated, she's alone. And you know what? Um, could you go around and visit her? And he did. He did it. He went around there, went to see the lady. <laughs> Actually, when he got there, the lady d denied all knowledge of, of that she was lonely and all the rest of it. But he did act on it anyway. He did it. And I was very pleased that I had um, arms in the community that they could actually go out and um, and actually do that. But you know what's really interesting is this. I mean, I started off talking about this. You know, the church right now, it's interesting that one of the things that's happening in the church is that a lot of church churches saw, for example, media as a sort of a an addition to what they do, but not something that they focused on and concentrated on. So what we're finding in this season at the moment is that a lot of churches are kind of jumping online, whereas people like Dr. Phil, myself, and other people had had a vision for television for a long time. Uh, so what's happening now is that the churches are sort of jumping on, many churches are jumping on, but they're not really prepared. So they're sort of holding mobile phones and they're not the research has not been done to, um, let's say, to make them look and appear in a, let's say, a palatable fashion. So so one of the things that the church can do right now, and uh, and it's what I'm involved in, in helping lots of churches, and if people want to get in contact with me, I'm happy to help them with that, is that we're showing people how to do things in a really professional manner, how to outreach, not just to preach sermons, all right? Not just to not just to preach sermons, you know, and record yourself preaching every week in church, but actually to make programs and make those programs relevant to the community. So that's one thing that the church should be doing. It should actually be, listen, man, in America, when I look at America and I look at the, 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 the movie industry in America and I think, I think how far behind we are in the UK, uh, we, we have no, um, um, what's the guy, Madea, um, uh, uh, Tyler Perry. We have no Tyler Perry. We have no no Spike Lees. We have none of these guys. I'm talking about guys that come out of the church, you know. I'm talking about people like, you know, Tyler came out of the church and is a powerful film producer. That is a huge, effective witness into the world. You'd be surprised how much those crazy movies actually witness into the world and how you can actually witness through those movies. So that's number one. You know, media is on my heart. It has been on my heart for over 25 years. I've been banging that on doors of churches and saying, why don't you have your own studio? I mean, you build a creche, you build a ladies room, you build a men's room, you build a sanctuary, you build everything. Where's your TV studio? You don't have one. And so for me, this has been a huge frustration for years, trying to get people in. And in the end, I gave up and said, well, if you won't do it, I do it myself, hence I've launched several stations of my own. The second thing that churches can be doing, and I think this is where people like yourself really come in, Yvonne, is we should be talking about the church in the marketplace, the church in the marketplace. So what I'm saying by that is that you, you, you are a Christian. You might be listening or watching. You are a Christian. Uh, every person is not called to a pulpit in a church. There are different pulpits. There are, there are pulpits in government, for example. There should be more believers moving into government roles. You think that just because, you, you know, you may, you may be gifted as a speaker, but that doesn't mean that you're called to be a pastor, right? That's so you, what you should be doing is you should be, maybe you should be in your local parliament. Uh, you should be there uh, in, uh, for the Conservative Party or the Labour Party or the Christian Party. You should be using your gift there, okay? Maybe you've, you've got a gift of um, singing, for example. Well, maybe, you know, <laughs> everybody automatically thinks, well, I have to go sing in the church. Maybe not. Maybe your call is to go sing, be a Christian, but sing. I don't mean sing worldly thoughts, but sing to a marketplace um, that... Look, when people like, have you noticed that when people like, what's his name, Justin, um, Justin, what's his name, the, the young the young guy, Justin Bieber, is it, or something like that? Justin Bieber, yeah. I think I, that's the that guy's name. Every time yeah. he says something about Christianity, it's, the tweets go mad. The, it's everywhere. It's all over Facebook. 
And I think to myself, there are so many people that God wants to use, okay? Wants to use them. And maybe maybe in the past, maybe we've closed the doors a little bit on those people. Maybe we should have been listening a little bit more to those people and saying, well, go into the world and do what you do, but just hold on to Christ. Maybe ministries need to be observing that more and releasing people more into the world, into various uh, outreaches where they can bring their gift to the world. So I'm excited about the church operating in the marketplace, like I do with Afro Hair and Beauty. When I'm operating in that zone, no, I'm not preaching the gospel. I'm not out there telling people, you must be a Christian. I'm not doing that. But what I'm doing is I'm organizing a great exhibition. And guess what? The, you, you, if you came last year, you would have seen that there was uh, four gospel artists at the show. You know, people came to me and said to me, I've never, ever experienced anything like that in my life. And you know what? They, 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 you know, they saw people like Lorene Cato singing and other people singing in the show, in the hair show, in the middle of the hair show. And all of sudden, what happened was Christianity became relevant to these people, whereas before it was irrelevant to them. They, they couldn't really see any relevance. But now they can identify those people. They, they, they have hair problems just like mine. They need a, pick, a, a comb to pick their hair out just like I do. So they now begin to, to connect with the church. And so I think the church has to go into the community and be, I'm not talking about, um, I'm not talking about conforming to the community and I'm not talking about, um, you know, being complicit with the ways of the world, but I'm talking about being in the world, but not being part of it, being there so you can affect it. If you're not in it, you can't win it. Right. I, 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 like that. I like that. I, I actually like that, Hugh, that if you're not in it, you can't win it. And I think this is the issue is that this there's a separation or there seems to be a separation between the church and the non-believers. It's like us and them, whereas we are all people. And so I think we, you know, the church needs to become more relevant. And I thank you, Phil, for bringing those eight churches on. I made sure I put that on the post. So when you see my head down, I'm actually typing in that there are 80 churches actively working in communities, which is great, right? Amen. 80 churches is absolutely amazing. Can we however, can we you know that however's coming because... You know, 80 churches in Luton. I live in Luton, guys. There are over 350 churches mm -hmm. in Luton alone. Mm -hmm. So that is a small percentage. I'm not, I'm, and I'm, I have to make it clear, I'm not here to have a go at you. But what I do want to do is I want to start on picking and making people feel uncomfortable because this is a time of uncomfortableness. This is a time <laughs> of, we, we, for everybody. It, it won't. It, is, it won't make them uncomfortable if they're doing it. It'll only make the people who aren't doing something uncomfortable. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's a church in Newton right now that is sewing all the nurse outfits for the nurses. So they took their tailoring skills and they're doing that all day and night. So they're not going to feel uncomfortable because they're doing it. They're doing it. Yeah. But then you, you know, what I'm saying is we. There are there are people who are doing it. There are Christians that are doing it, and there are non-Christians that That's are right. doing it. Right? Why is it that we are seeing? Is it is it a fact of that Christians don't want people to know? Because I see the non-Christians out there, and everybody knows they're out there. They're in the hospitals. They're they're the, they're making the PPE. They're doing all these things, and it's all it's everywhere. Yeah. Whereas yeah. the church is really now. I want to say this, and this is very true, because there are people who are working. There are mm -hmm. absolutely, and and you know, respect due to them. And I'm not. They they will not feel bad for this because they're doing their part. Mm -hmm. But. I, when you think of 80 churches, right, it's in as a number, and then you hear 350 churches in one area alone, mm -hmm. then there's a discrepancy yeah. there. Um, I, 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 as, as a presenter, I think you might, um, how can I say it, you might be on the spot a little bit on this particular thing because you have hidden knowledge of knowing the media is not controlled by the church. And that. the goal of the media is to kill the church. Oh, so oh, oh you're saying it. You, you jumped in and said what I was going to say. There's a battle going on. Up. 
you know, that's that's Satan's job. That's yeah. what he controls. Yeah, the God of this age. Phil, Phil let me it jump is. in and echo, echo you. Let yeah, me echo sorry. you because I've I've been involved in. Uh, you probably some of you know. You know, maybe watching. I've I've been on channels like Revelation TV for years, and I can tell you that. After 18 years of being in, in general broadcasting, I can tell you that there's no entity that, that has to fight for airtime like the church. Listen, when, when the church tries to do anything, okay, the government is against you. Uh, the, the, um, the authorities are against you. The schools are against you. The, 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 um, that's why I said, unless Christians get into the marketplace and where they can change the things, it, you know, the battle is, you you cannot believe the fight that there is. I mean, right now, um, it is literally, you, you may not know this, but if you have a satellite TV channel, you actually cannot preach the gospel. You, you cannot preach the whole gospel on satellite TV. Don't be fooled. When you, and I'm, I'm part of this, so I can tell you this for a fact. If you, all these channels that you see on television, if they're coming out of the UK, you can't really preach the whole gospel because you can't tell the whole truth. If you tell the whole truth, they will shut you down or fine you. And that's a serious situation. The, for the last, for, certainly for the last eight to 10 years, the media has had a stranglehold by the authorities uh, which do not want the gospel to be preached. So you, people need to understand that this is the whole truth. You know, the, and, and so let's not, let's not sweep that one under the table. There's a battle. And it, the, just to be, and even let me talk about pastors because I've also been a pastor and, and, and even had to go through the whole thing of getting a building, uh, getting licenses to, to operate as a church and so on and so forth. Nothing is easy for a church, nothing. They don't make anything easy for a church. Churches exist by the will of God and that's about it. And it's not that they don't have the will. It's not that they don't have the will to do more. It's just that, in a sense, many churches were taken by surprise by COVID, just like everybody else. Nobody, you, you, you know, I mean, there's a few prophetic people that knew, but they didn't know exactly what was happening. They knew something was coming, but they didn't know exactly what it was. So many of the churches have been taken by surprise. And if the pastors are honest, they'll say so. The thing surprised them. And like I said, some of us who have been feeding into the church or trying to minister into the church for the last 10 years saying, look, let's do this, let's do this, let's be relevant, let's use media and so on and so forth, because we knew that we were being clamped down on by the authorities. We knew that satellite was 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 killing Christianity and we and we couldn't have no chance of getting on terrestrial, right? ITV, BBC, forget that. You, you, you can't preach the gospel on those channels. You know, you, you will literally, they'll put you in prison first. So we knew something was changing. The church wasn't listening at that point. COVID-19 carries a message for the church and hopefully the church is hearing in this season. And Yvonne, when the church comes out of this season, my prayer is that the church would have heard and that the church will respond and change in some of the things. Phil, some of the great things you're talking about that, Phil's a do that church are doing, we should have been doing all the time. We should have been doing all the time. This is a response to what yeah. has happened. I'm not, that's not a dig, that's not a criticism. No, 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 it's no, just, it's woken, no. this thing has a message for the world and it has a message for the church. And the, the message for the world is, what the message for the church is wake up. And okay. that's what I think this this thing has done. Well, so, certainly there's a humility required, but across, because he without sin, cast the first stone. Right? Exactly. So the second thing, I'll give you an example. Uh, Yvonne, if I bought a steak and kid, you, you tell me you're hungry now. I'm going to get in my car. I'm driving 22 minutes on the M1, and I'm bringing you a steak and kidney pie. It won't make the news. But if I drive 22 minutes and steal the only steak and kidney pie you've got is front page news. They don't <laughs> want to know what the church is doing. True. That's the problem. The church is not this horrible ogre that's at it. It's just it doesn't we, sell papers. You know, I they, hear that, but we've got to get past that they don't want us to. That we've got to, where there is a will, there is a way. Phil, you know me already. I am a driver. I will, I will get the bus, I will get the lorry, and I will drive it through the building if I have to, to make a point. We have to do better. End yeah, that's story. why Christ said, that's why the Bible says, love him unto death. 
Yeah. You see, this is the only job that you can do where you say, apart from being in the army, that I could get killed for doing what the Bible says to do. And I have no problem with that. I tell the kids, I say, listen, if I'm not home, I've been arrested because I'm preaching the gospel, the good news. I've already fixed my mind on that. And to throw the biscuit out, it's important. You're not just here talking. Let all the listeners know. My name's Philip Noel. This is my email address. They got an issue. Call me. I'm not going to turn my back on their issue. And, you know, Amen. it's not like I'm saying what should be done and then I'm running away because we're off. And that's, what, and um, that's why you're here today. That's right. Listen, it's, it's by no accident that it's you guys that are here. So, uh, Hugh, I don't know you as well, but don't think I haven't researched you because I have. <laughs> <I've> okay. <researched. laughs> so, so you guys are here because you guys do what you say you're going to do. I've known Phil for a very, very long time, back in the day, Soul 100, you know, singing and doing lots of ministry. So I know Phil well and the family. And so for me, it's like, who can I bring on? Who is who is trustworthy? Who is a real man of God that does what they say they are going to do? That's why you guys are here. Because at the end of the day, there are, there are, like I said, there's 350 churches in Newton alone much less Dunstable, which is just down the road. So I'm looking at who who, who can I bring on that's going to give it, who's going to tell the truth, and it's going to be authentic in, in what they're saying. And so you two guys are here. There's no mistake at all on this part. And it's, you know, I want to make it clear, I'm not having a go, but it is my job to push you guys, and it is my job to dig at you and get the best out of what's going on and bring the honesty out. So the people who message me on a daily basis and say, where is the church? Why are they not there? I, I, I can't find a pastor to talk to. There's only one in, in the whole of Luton, really, in the area that I'm in. I only see one who's online and he's, and it's not, it might be, a, he might be doing something with his church otherwise, but he's just sitting down in his front room on Instagram, Facebook, and he's just talking to the people every day, every day, every well, day. I put, as Phil said, I put my email address up so yeah. if people want to, you know, if they have questions, yes. this is, I don't this mind. Is what we want. Yeah, I don't this mind. Is what we want. You know, I, you know, I get them all the time. I get people literally every day um, from from uh, Revelation TV, from other channels, who send me questions and I answer them. The problem is that you know you could spend up all your time doing that I'm and you don't that, end yeah. up doing what you need to be doing. But I do set aside time to answer things, and if I'm led of the Lord. And if some, if I see an email that I know it's there's desperation, if I see, mm -hmm. a, 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 especially sometimes you get an email from somebody or a message from somebody, and you can tell the spirit of death is near them. They're they're really that close. Um, the number of conversations that I've had with people where we've pulled them back from that point of death, literally mm -hmm. from point of suicide. Um, that's important, and this is the reason why I, I'll keep harping on and saying it over and over again why I think people, Christians in the community is so important. Because today, maybe the only church that people will see, these programs that I, I've been doing on, fa on Facebook and places, you know, uh, people tell me how comforting they are. They, just to hear somebody who has faith talking and, and talking about the faith that they have. Can I tell a little story? Phil said something, I, I won't take a long time, but I must tell this because Phil mentioned about the airplane. Phil mentioned about the aeroplane and fear, you know, and I can tell you this, this is in my book. If you get, I've got a, a, several books, but there's one particular book called Facts Versus Truth. And this account is in there. And I, you know, I have a very, very good friend. His name is Bishop Al Baxter. And we were flying on a flight, flying between Jamaica and, uh, uh, sorry, between Miami and Jamaica, or Toronto and Jamaica, sorry. We flew from Toronto to Miami, and then from there we flew to Jamaica. So we're on this flight, we get about halfway across. The bishop's sitting next to me, he's fast asleep. And I'll tell you, um, the plane hit the type of turbulence that Phil was, was making reference to. I'm talking about, the pl you were up there, then suddenly the, the plane drops, your, your, your food and everything else stayed up there, but you went down, the plane dropped down. And in this instant, I experienced, this is the second time I've had something like this happen on a plane, but this time it, the reaction was completely different. I saw fear 
in the and heard fear throughout that plane. So every time that the plane would go woof like that down, you would literally hear everybody in the plane go, just like it's like a huge scream right across the plane. So that time, you know, and now I've been a Christian for a few years. When it first happened to me a year, years and years ago, when I first was a believer, something like that happened. I tried to, to say father. I tried to, to pray years ago. I couldn't get the word father out. I kept saying, <laughs> because fear had gripped me. But this time I'd been saved a long time and, and I knew what to do. And I started to pray. I started praying in the spirit. I was praying in tongues, sitting there praying away. And every time the plane went down, I prayed louder. So I eventually woke up the bishop that was sitting next to me. He turned to me, he said, hey, what's going on? And I said, I'll tell you something. Uh, we need to pray because this plane doesn't feel right. And this man turned to me and he said, what? I said, the, the turbulent, I'm in between praying. And he said, no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Not on my plane. And he, he looked at me and he said these words. He said, not on my plane. Then he turned to the window of this aircraft. You know, he said, he said, I see myself like Jesus, the son of God. And I walk out on the wings of this aircraft right now. This is what he said. And he said it loud. He didn't hold back. Listen, he said this so the whole plane could hear. He said, I walk out on the wings of this aircraft and I speak to the wind and I speak to the turbulence and I command you. He said, peace be still in the mighty name of Jesus. And the entire plane heard it. You know what God did? I'll tell you something, the entire aircraft, the entire aircraft went silent because you heard this sound that sounded as if the plane landed on something in midair. I mean, it just, it, it sounded like it grounded. It went like that. And the thing took solid ground in the air. And I'll tell you something, five minutes went by, complete silence. And then after about five minutes, somebody started saying, now there's a man of God on this plane, you know, <laughs> America, you know, they started reacting to this thing. I think there's a man of God on this plane. The, the air stewardesses came over and started saying, would you like a drink, sir? Would you, would you can we get you something to eat you, on us? You know, and I'll tell you something. I sat on that plane, I'll never forget it. And I was a man of God, you know, been pastor for a few years. I sat there like a little child looking at this man, just like, Bishop, is there anything I can do for you? Can I, can I? Was I suddenly saw I saw faith in action. So when when we're fa it's so funny because when Phil mentioned about the fear thing, I thought mm -hmm. I must tell this story because that was the thing in my life that actually it actually triggered faith over fear for me, and especially me. I travel a lot, you know. I mean, I I, I take I'm on aircraft at least six to eight times a month sometimes. So I travel a lot. And so when you continually on these aircrafts and these little things happen, and that's a place where collective fear comes to you, you have to know how to deal with fear. And he did it through the word of God. And he did it through the presence of God in him. And when I saw him do that, it, something came now into me that changed my my understanding of, of faith over fear. And I'll tell you something, I began to walk in that same spirit, that same spirit over fear. So it's exciting when we start to talk about this way because people may be listening and they may have fears of all kinds, but you can understand that you can get through and past your fear with your faith. <laughs> I had to tell that story. Phil triggered it. An amazing story. I just got a comment here from Ivan yeah. who says, I think some of the ministers in church have not confronted the fear of death and therefore they cannot reach people who are afraid. Well, well it's interesting. Um, because I was, you know, when we think on, on things like that, fear reaches every house because mm. death reaches every house. It may not be today. It might not be tomorrow, but it's going to come. You know, it reaches every single family because there isn't anyone who lives forever on this earth, in this little body. God has given us, what, three score and ten. And so the average man is 70 years and, you know, and some earlier, some later, as I say, etc. Mm. So that, so, so when they, so what it is, is people see pastors, they don't see them as human. They see them as the things that are happening in the world doesn't visit their house. But remember, if I use myself as an example, as I said, my wife had an aneurysm. That was a surprise. I had cancer in 2017. 
eight cc's of cancer had to be cut out of me, etc. In bed for nearly two months, etc. What I'm saying is everyone around me was frightened, if that makes sense. That mm -hmm. because of because I heard in the police cell, for example, and I exchanged fear for what something that became stronger for me, etc. I had a stroke in 2000, the back end of 2017. So these things visit houses. If a doctor had his way, I'd be on medication for life if the mm -hmm. doctor had their way. But it, when I was went to see Hugh in Spain, remember just before Christmas, mm -hmm. um, we were staying across the road from where that pastor died in the swimming pool That's with right. his two children. So fear is in that whole household because what are we going to do? There's no dad, there's no sister, there's no brother. The wife has now got to deal with it. What I'm trying to say is if we could just click into the fact that it is something that is there, God has identified and said he didn't give it to us. So he's saying, this is the best I can give you to do in your lifetime. Believe this word or try this word. You know, it's like free shredded wheat or Kellogg's or the country nut flakes. Every time I looked at it, I said, nah, I ain't eating that. It don't look like ricicles. It could never be nice. One day I was so hungry, so hungry. I looked to the left. I looked to the right. Everybody, I said, I was never going to eat this thing. I sneaked into the kitchen and I poured some of it in a bowl and I put some milk in it. And I went, whoa, it tastes nice. But I had this fear that it couldn't taste nice. So I'm just, I had to try it. And so what we're all being driven into this corner, to try it. So what I'm saying to everyone is, you can see our email address. If you don't want to do it in public, you don't want to do it on the show. What I'm saying is, you got to try it. Try it and then tell me it don't work. Yeah, now, you're not going to see lightning or volcanoes moving. The sea is not going to own up, open up necessarily. But what would happen is, you would have made a change in the atmosphere because, you know, Jesus said his words are spirit and life. And the Bible says the power of life and death is in the tongue. The reason that word is there is because what we say makes a difference. So if we spent 30 years saying fear, 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 we can change the narrative by saying, God, 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 God says, OK, if you want to call me, I'll put a, a, some rules in place. Call me through my son, Jesus. So right where you are, if you just decided to say, you know, what, Jesus, I need your help. I've got this thing called fear. I, I need to get in control of it. I'm fearful of dying. I've been sick and it hurts. I'm fearful of losing my children. I'm fearful of killing my children. I'm fearful of two-timing on my husband or my husband's been two-timing on me and I'm fearful about everything. I can't swim very well, but I've just took on a job as a lifeguard. I'm fearful. What I'm saying is the reason John 3, 16 is there, it says, for God so loved the world. That means he so loved us and knew about our fear that he sent his only begotten son. His begotten son was Jesus. And he said, whosoever, isn't that interesting? Whoever is listening to me right now, it's not a corny statement. There must be something real in it if we've been saying it for 2,000 years. Whosoever believes in Jesus Christ shall be saved. So he says, this is how we're saved. Right where you're sitting now, no one can see you. Even if you don't want your brother and sister to see you, you can do this in private. You can run to your room, shut the door and say, God, I need your help. And I've heard that you said, I can reach you through Jesus. So I say, Jesus, save me now. I choose to believe in your name. I choose to believe that you can save me. And guess what? He will save you now. He will work it out slowly because, you know, when you're far from home, like the prodigal son, he said he was in a far country and then he came to his senses and decided to make his way back to his father's home. But when he got to the door, the father was waiting at the gate to put a ring on his finger, a cloak on his back, shoes on his on his feet and put a cloak upon him. And then he killed animals and gave him a big feast. That's what God wants to do right now in the midst of your fear right now. Right in the middle of it, God wants to, through his son, reach you, touch you, get you to call upon his name. And I'm inviting you. Listen, there won't be fireworks, but what there will be, I'll give you a guarantee. You know what it says in, in, in court? I swear by almighty God. That's what they say, but the Christians are allowed to swear. So I promise by almighty God that I'm telling you the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. If you call on the name of Jesus, you shall be saved. So what's the first thing that will happen? The sting will be taken out of death. The victory will be taken out of the grave. 
You know, you're working, you're building your muscles every day. You know what? Push up, number one, I don't fear death. Push up, number two, I won't fear death. You'll be like Joshua. This is what happened to Joshua. In the beginning, Joshua, through Moses, heard that God said, be strong and courageous. Then Moses told Joshua. Then God spoke to Joshua. And then God said to Joshua again, have I not told you, be strong and courageous? If you run all the way to Joshua chapter 10, guess what happened? Before Joshua died, he turned around and said to Israel, be strong and courageous. So he was trained up like a child who, and did not go away from what he was taught it, when he became a man. So guess what? I'm now taught. I'm now a believer. I never always will. And I'm saying, believe in the name of Jesus. Call Jesus right now. No one can hear you. Just say, Jesus, save me now. Something is going to happen in Jesus' name. And send your testimonies to Yvonne. It will excite her for when she does her next gospel concert. <laughs> you bring it out there. <laughs> it's out there now. <laughs> oh, you just put me off guard there. <laughs> you yeah. say that. Someone yes. Is coming. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. I think we need to do one online. Yeah. So I can mm -hmm. facilitate it. Let's, let's yeah. do one. But um, yeah, um, thank you for that, Phil. It's very, very, I've got a, a message here that's actually come via WhatsApp. So the messages are coming from every which angle and um, so I'm very encouraging. They feel very, the person feels very encouraged by your words. Yeah, these are very encouraging words. So, you know, one of the reasons, one of the reasons why um, I thought about doing this show is because, in in myself in my in who i am as a woman as a person as a human being i am an evangelist i i love to be out there and to witness to two people and um i just feel that that the people who are who are talking to me who are coming to me i mean i i actually minister in a different way now um i still do the music but i i'm, I'm not so much on the pulpit i'm out in restaurants and I'm singing and I will administer and drop some words where I can, um, dependent on where the venue is. And so, you know, one of the things that was spoken to me as a person in the church was they said to me that you have, um, the call that you have, you have an, uh, a, a sacred call in a secular place. The place that I am ministering is not within the full the church walls. It is very much out on roads, which is where um, both I and Phil met on yeah. on that kind of journey. <coughs> and, and so this, this is why it's so important to me, and this is why I brought this subject up because in my mind, I, I'm not seeing the evangelists out there. I'm not. I'm not seeing. I know evangelism has changed, and we're in a pandemic, and we can't go out. But I'm just, you know, from what people are messaging me, I'm lonely. I'm sad. I don't know. There's where can I turn to, and and having to direct them because I'm. I don't have the the pastor kind of title, so I I kind of steer them in the right direction to get that spiritual. Um, that spiritual connection or that spiritual advice that they need. And I just, you know, for Hugh, who is who is into media, I think it's a great thing. I think we need to see more of this. Um, I think, you know, now, now we have to do things differently because churches are shut down. So we have to kind of make uh, uh, an open up a playing field for people who would not normally go to church. Because it's all well and good for those who do, but it's for those, and those are the ones who are on my mind, it's the ones who don't go to church, the ones who have no affiliation with a church. Mm -hmm. and, and this is why I did this programme, and this is why you guys are here, because, you know, I think it's so important that we are inclusive and we open this conversation up to those who who don't have access mm -hmm. on where they could go. And I really love the fact that you guys have put your address your email addresses um, by your name. So, guys, um, when you see the names, that there is an email address. So, what I'll do is each time um, one of our speakers speaks, I will just home in on them so you can actually see their email address. And if you need to, you are welcomed to contact these men of God, and I will vouch for them. 
um, because you know these guys are come from good stock. <laughs> like Phil, like Phil, Yvonne, I wasn't always a Christian. No. Um, but but you know the thing um, that is very evident about your ministry, as you called it, a ministry, is you are actually one of those people that I'm talking about. The church in the marketplace, what you are doing, um, reaching out um, to. Um, in the ways that you're doing it, whether it's with concerts or whatever. I, I think I've heard about some of the concerts that you've done in the past where I think Dr. Phil has been involved. You are one of those people that 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 God is using to reach out in these last days in the end times. And I want to say this to you, um, you know, you're, you're playing a very important role. And, you know, I once heard somebody say this, it was a very good, well-known preacher, I think it was T.D. Jakes, I think I heard him say these words, that if you want to know where your ministry really lies, look for the pain, look for the pain of it. Um, and you can tell from the way you're speaking, you have pain in that area. It pains you to think that there is no one doing, you know, outreach and let's say into parts of the community that you, that you, that are coming to you. But that's the reason why God has you there. That's exactly the reason why God has planted you there. And what I'm saying is that if everybody, Michelle, listened to the voice of the Lord and didn't just think, well, my, my role must only be either pastor, uh, evangelist, or whatever it might be, one of the fivefold or in the church, but it can be fivefold, but it can be out of the church. It's the church in the marketplace. That's what really excites me. Um, when you are involved in the media, you 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 almost you're almost forced to um, to go in this direction because pulpits generally, as I said until recently, um, pulpits or rather churches could not really see the relevance of doing you know media and programming and stuff. So today now we have a lot of people who are not trained to do visual media they're not trained to be on television where something i've been crying out for for many any and some of the pastors who are watching if they're watching and they know me they know that that's what i've been doing for the last 18 years is trying to get people to move in this direction so i take my hat off to you if i had a hat off i'd take it off i commend you because you're doing what god has called you to do the pain that you feel is right you, it's right that you feel that way because it's telling you that this is where God wants you to be. So you're answering his call. The pain is there because it's telling you something needs to be done. You are answering the call. That You are answering the call of the pain and God has placed you there. And maybe with other people hearing this broadcast right now, um, they will be encouraged by you, by what you're doing. And they might think, well, okay, well, maybe I can reach out in my own way. Maybe there's maybe I can start a gymnasium. Maybe I can start I don't know, you know, um, teach people a weight loss class, but do it from a see. That's where that's where there's opportunities to reach out to people. When somebody is overweight and they want to lose weight, and you've got 20 people in a room, and you can say to them, "Before we start, I always like to pray." That's a witness. Sometimes it's only a seed that you sow, but those seeds are very very important because they grow up. The amount of people that have come back to me and said to me over the years and, you know, just said, I saw you on television and you said something. And sometimes it's just a little throwaway thing that you say. It's not even something that you think is it's not a great sermon. It's not one of your great sermonettes that you put together and spent a lot of time on. But it was just a little thing that you said that somebody says, you know something, those words, those words, they ministered to me. So I don't take that lightly and I, I commend you for what you're doing. And I encourage other people who might be watching. You might be sitting there watching and thinking, well, what can I do? Well, maybe there's lots you can do. Maybe you're a Christian. Maybe you have a gift or a skill that you've not used so far. Use this season. Use this opportunity to increase your knowledge in that area maybe go on youtube find out a little bit more about how to do whatever you want to do don't let the lockdown and i've been saying this for the last few weeks do not let the lockdown leave you the way it found you let me say that again do not let the lockdown leave you the way it found you 
make sure that when you come out of the lockdown, you have some new skills, you have some new thought patterns, and you have some ideas that you can take forward. That, I believe, is what God will do. And by the way, this is what God, God does to overcome fear, by the way. You know, instead of us sitting down, as you said, um, Yvonne, um, you know, listening to Sky News and, and all that stuff that's pouring fear into us, how about listening to the voice of the Lord, asking God, what can I do? How can I improve my life? How can I be focused on God rather than be focused on the fear? It's amazing how God is stepping in and changing people's lives right in the middle of this COVID-19 season. That should encourage people who hear that. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. We've got some comments. It's, it's, it's kind of going off on, on our Facebook feed. I've just kind of rebooted. And, uh, yeah, but um, <laughs> I think uh, we've got um, – there's some people on here that they they are really um, going off, really. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, we've got Mark Clark who says, as a spiritual being living out of human existence, we are here living out eternity. This is just part of our journey. Um, so I am saying maybe the fear is to try Jesus. Is this the real challenge? I'm asking, but I think there's a there's a conversation going on online mm -hmm. um, regarding this conversation mm -hmm. that we're having here. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a question here: Does does Doctor Phil come from Northwest by any chance? Well, the answer is true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the postcode, as they say. You know, um, just, just it's, it's funny, Jesus did, and you know, we need to be aware of this as well. Um, Matthew 24 talks about the beginning of sorrows. Okay, um, and if I look at the particular verse in 24, verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Um, it talks about then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my sake. And if you think about it, um, the most hated organization, I think, in the world, you know, apart from someone who does a bomb, is the church. Oh, amen. To Everybody's that. got something. Look, look, everything you do good is spoken evil of, right? Um, yet Jesus said in verse 7 For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in divers places. The, they call the pandemic a pestilence. We had the fire in Australia that nearly took out half the country. We've got the swarming locusts that took out all the harvest in Kenya. And then we've got um, the, the global pandemic with um, COVID-19. Um, we, we need to brace ourselves a little bit that he said the beginning of sorrows. Now, so we've got to put on the whole armor of God. And the only way we can do that is by believing and putting that armor on and getting ready to face the tomorrow while we're still here. Because as Dr. Hugh was saying, you know, we do all go through this deep water, you know, and it's important that we get this point across to you. Yeah, we're bubbly and happy and strong here, but we've had our days of falling. Yeah, but thank God the word said that the righteous man fall, but he get up seven times, etc. Yeah. So we're not sending perfection to you. Listen, I still, I, I still, um, what's the word? Eat too many pieces of chicken and don't put enough green on the plate. And if I qualify that with life itself, I still don't eat correctly. You know, I set myself up for a challenge, etc. Uh -huh. I still, I still maybe answer the children before I hear them. Yeah. So I'm not saying you're not, you're not getting this, um, the luminous light of perfection in front of you. What I'm saying, we go to real things same way. Council tax, I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. <laughs> One reason I want to go to heaven is I don't have to pay council tax no more. <laughs> it never goes. And guess what? It's a weird bill because if you don't pay it, pay it you know, because I used to work for Wilson County Court, they turn up at the door with a warrant. And if you don't pay it, they take you to prison. And I'm mm -hmm. saying, I'll be honest with you, I'm more worried about missing a council tax payment than I am of COVID-19. That's the honest truth. Yeah, because I, I see getting, getting, getting to heaven is a relief factor for me. You know, it's like, yeah, like, you know, I hear it's going on there and uh, 
I'll have a better bass guitar than I got here. It'll always be in tune, etc. You know, and uh, my voice will be better. I'll sing like Yvonne, you know, like who who sang on Broadway. Do you remember when he went to Broadway and he smashed it, blue dress and all, etc. Remember all of these things, you know. And so yeah, I just want to get it out there. We're 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 we're, we're Listen, as soon as this program finished, I've got to get a, a, a pint of apple juice. You know, I'm thirsty, you know, yeah. and I'm hungry and I bought some six bag of crisps and I'll eat them all, etc. We're normal. <laughs> we're normal. That's And that's important for, I think, people to know. But we're willing to help. You know, if it weren't for the government, if anyone was sick, we'd drive straight to their house and pray right. with them right now. I'm going to address something because we've got something going on on, on Facebook and I... I'm going to address it because I feel there's a need mm -hmm. because the way in which this show is run is that everybody has a voice and we do have somebody who comes on the show regularly and, and but one of the things about this is that whilst it's good, it, it can be good conversation I am at the place where I feel like I need to address it. So we have someone on, on online who's saying, you guys, religion, in brackets, mm -hmm. have all the wealth and you give out a loan or two and feed a couple of people and clothe some others and feel you have done enough. There are plenty of secular organisations doing triple than the church do. Now, before you guys come in, I'm just going to say this, is that I have a belief and I don't hide my belief. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is my belief. And I will continue to have my belief regardless of what anybody says. And so when you come onto my show and you are engaging with the people that are, are on the show, I'm asking you, and, and this person knows exactly what I'm talking to, to have some respect and have some manners. If you do not like the content of the show, you do not have to stay. You know I'm a believer, and you know that whatever I do is what I believe in. If you don't, again, if you do not like the content of this show, you do not have to stay. But I'm going to put a challenge out to you because I believe the reason why you condemn Christians so much is because you want to be one, but you're frightened to be one. You're frightened to even acknowledge that there is a God because um, this person is an atheist, by the way, I'm just saying. So if you are going to stay on the line, have some manners. Because I don't come on your, 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 your feed and disrespect you. I don't disrespect your people. I have manners. Do not come here and do it here because I will not have it. And I will stamp that out. So this is about the love of God. So I'm showing you the grace of God now and I'm giving you the option to either stay or go. But I'm telling you this, God loves you. Regardless of the fact that you don't want to love him and you will disrespect his children, God still loves you and is still waiting for you to come over and talk to him. And he waits with open arms. Guys, can we continue? I just needed that's, to say uh, that. That's, that's, that's beautiful, Yvonne. And I just want to say to that listener, um, not just do I agree, I just say this, um, if anybody that is a Christian or you, it seems like a Christian to you, has hurt you in the past, has disrespected you, done something that you can't get past, I'm repenting for that person now. I'm asking for your forgiveness for that person that's hurt you. And I'm inviting you to contact me so we can reason this thing out, you know, and that I'm sure that we'll end up building a bridge because God wants all souls saved. And it's really important. And I believe that you've commun communicated and Yvonne's spoken to you for a reason. So I'm taking it a step further. There it is right there, Philip at soul100records.com. Contact me, give me a number, I'll call you, I'll listen. 
but and also I want to make sure that we make everything right for you and letting you know that we're available. But certainly we start by saying sorry. If a Christian has hurt you, I'm saying sorry, and let's see if we can move forward from there. Oh man, that's good talk, Phil. I haven't seen any of these comments, and so I don't know what what's been said. But I can tell you this: that generally, um, people are responding to the idea or the notion that they have about church. They don't really know. They don't know Phil, and they don't know me. They don't know Yvonne. They don't know anything about us. But they're responding to the general idea of what they think church is all about. Um, what what the, the problem with that is it's just like how um, a certain ethnic group used to treat the black people, you know, black people during slavery and so on and so forth. You know, people kind of just make an assumption about about who's who's here talking about we have all the wealth and all that. They have no idea, no idea about the struggles that people have had to go through in order uh, just to preach the gospel, that the, the things that have they've given up on. But of course, what's in the public is all the news and the negative stuff. All you're hearing about, and this is why, and I, let me let me do a little bit of a, let me get on my soapbox for a second. Because sometimes this is the fault of people in the church, okay? Because sometimes we spread the wrong message, okay? And, and, and then you have people, and you know, people are seeing things and we don't think about what we're saying publicly or what we're doing publicly. And there are some things that are for public consumption and some things are not. And so then sometimes people are looking at the church and they're making assumptions about the whole church. And that just isn't right. There are good, good, and let me, I don't know what the comments are saying, but I'll tell you something. I have met some good people in the church and I've met some not good people in the church. Let me tell you that. The church, like every other organization and any other entity, you're going to have good people and you're going to have not so good people. They are all there because everyone's trying to be better at life than who they are. Well, that's, that's why everyone's there. They all have this common thing that we're all trying to be better. But some people are further down than others. Some people are higher up than others. Some people are achieving a great walk with God and some people are not. Those who are would, let's say, be critical of the church, unfortunately, as Dr. Phil was saying, they may have come across one or two people in the church who may have portrayed an idea of the church to them. And they've taken that as the picture of the church. And I sense by the Holy Spirit that that is what has happened. You've been hurt by somebody who you thought represented the church. What you didn't know is that the church is filled with people who are not really Christians. There are many people. Let me break this down for you. The word Christ means to anoint. That's what it actually means. People think Christianity is about some religion. It's not about religion. The word Christ means to anoint. In the same way as you take a bottle of oil and you pour a bottle of oil on your child's hair and you, you rub some grease in there before you comb it, right? That's what the word Christ means, Christos. It comes from the word Messiah. It means that also means to pour on. Now, when you think about that, what does that mean? It means that there must be something present that has been poured on by God. And that thing is not a thing, it's a being. And that being is the Holy Spirit. Now, some people are in the house, the building called church, but they've never been poured on by the Holy Spirit. So therefore they can't actually represent God. They can be in the house of God and they're not gonna be thrown out. They're trying to work out their faith like everybody else, but they haven't got, they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. And some of those people, end up on Facebook. Some of them end up watching programs like this. And some of them vent their anger, they vent their confusion, they vent their frustration because they indeed have been hurt by somebody. So number one, Dr. Phil has apologized on, your on their behalf. But secondly, let me also say to you, don't judge, if you judge the church because of the deeds of one or two people that may have done something to you, then are you not just as bad as those who said, well, all black people were, didn't have as much intelligence as, 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 say, white people? Are you not just as bad because what you're doing is you're just grouping this whole group of people that you don't even know? You don't know anything about their lives. You don't know how, well, how they've had to struggle to do what they do. I'm not defending every single minister. I wouldn't do that. Some ministers may, some of them are in the pulpit. They shouldn't even be in the pulpit. I removed myself from the pulpit, myself. I removed myself. I didn't want to be, let's say, a pulpit pastor anymore because 
I felt that as a pulpit pastor, I didn't have the kind of patience that that a pulpit pastor like maybe Dr. Phil may have. For me personally, I tell you once, you know, listen, I'm off. You know, that's it. that's not the right, you know, people don't want that. They want somebody that they can keep coming back to all the time. I'm not saying that's you, Phil, but they can keep coming back to and keep getting, you know, sugar coated on and so on and so forth. That wasn't me. So I realized that pulpit pastoring was not for me. Better thing for me to do, get on the media, make a program, tell it like it is. And if you don't like it, I'm sorry, but those who receive it will be blessed by it. So please, here's my, th even though I haven't seen your comments, please try not to judge everybody with the same brush, okay? It doesn't work that way. It does not work that way. Try to get to know a person before you make a judgment of them. That's very really important. Soapbox finished. Thank you so much. Listen, we've got about uh, about 15 minutes left of the show. And I want to kind of dedicate this to those who 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 do who who want to know about Christ. I I, I want to just leave these last few minutes for those people because at the end of the day we are here to help we are here to to bridge the gap regardless of 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 what has gone on this is why we are here and and you guys know that for me um like i said in the beginning there is this thing that's that's on me that we must give those who don't know the opportunity to meet christ we know that we are living in the last days. My mother used to say that. My mother passed away nearly 40 years ago. Mm. But the time is now. And so, and I know that, that from, from the people who I work with, that they are there is a struggle. And so for those people, I just want to give this time to them, give them some comfort, some reassurance on where they can go and what they can do to meet Christ to form a relationship with Christ, if that's what they want to do. You know, because we are people and um, we have wants, we have needs, we have desires. And at the end of the day, this situation is one that none of us have faced before. We are in unprecedented times. Our backs are against the wall. Nature is actually doing really well without us. You look outside, and you look at the, the, the grass, the trees, the birds, you can actually hear the birds singing. And maybe that's because we've actually got time now to do that. But I think that nature is fine. The issues are with us now. And so I'm going to hand it over to you guys for you guys to kind of talk to the, the listeners and offer some hope yeah. um, to I, them I, if they need well, because Phil is the evangelist, we should let him have the final say. So let me let me just let me say this, and then I'll hand to Phil. He's he's qualified to to call people into the kingdom and to to make the altar call. So I'll just want to say this, and it's very simple. Um, twenty seven years or something like that ago, I was in a state of complete and total ruin in my life. This is what I mean about people not knowing who you are. I was in a worse state than, COVID could never put me in a worse state than what I was in. I was in a terrible state. Um, I was literally uh, racked with pain on a daily basis, racked with pain. They said that I had something called ME, or at the time, yuppie flu. I don't know how to describe it. My muscles were like, solid rock all the time I was tensed all the time fully tensed and I was supposed to be a successful business person but I was dying on the inside and I can tell you something the one thing I can tell you and I you know my friends thought I'd gone nuts because I got into my car one day and listening to a song by Aretha Franklin on the on my tape player called Walk in the Light I pulled to the side of the road and said, Lord, if you are real, if this is real, if this thing that I'm hearing about Jesus Christ is walking in the light and so on and so forth, if you were, I was brought up a Catholic, but I never really had faith. But if you, I said, if you are real, I said, can you help me? 
it wasn't a fancy uh, message. I didn't have any fancy prayer. My prayer was a simple prayer. If you are real, can you help me? And here I am, 20 something years later, I don't know, probably, I'm not good with maths, that's one of my weaknesses, but I was born again in, 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 in 1994. So here I am today in, two, in 2020, okay? And I'm still walking with that same Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you something, no matter what is going on around you in this COVID-19 situation, I can tell you right now for a fact, the only people that I know, the only people that I know who have peace, and I mean this, I, I, I'm not going to be 100%, but I'll say maybe 95% of the people that I know that have peace, and I know many people are people who are like me, who are walking in a knowledge of Jesus Christ. I don't know how people are walking and managing with what's going on around them without the knowledge that the God of the universe, our Father, is protecting them. I couldn't live without that. So my appeal to anybody who may be listening and watching is please listen to the words that Dr. Phil is about to say to you because I can tell you something. I know this man. And the relationship he's going to call you into, this is what you need. You, you think you need a doctor. You think you need medication. You think you need some, some, you need to get out of your house. You think that lockdown's gone long enough. That's not what you need. You need the spirit of God in you. You need to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So with that, that's my final word. And I'll hand over to the evangelist and let him talk to you. Thanks, Doctor. Here, um, if I let me just reel it up for us a little bit, because I'm um, because I'm going to invite you all to do something, and I'm actually because I'm there's not much time. It's only about three or four minutes. So I'm going to just do this very very quickly, and I pray that if you don't get it all in the first time, re, re, you know, rewind the program, watch it again. I want you to just think about Jesus for a minute, and maybe. If you've not got Jesus in your life as your Lord and Savior, put everything you know about Jesus out of your mind. Just or put it on the left for a minute. I want to give you a different perspective on Jesus. So we know that the Bible has said that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. So the first thing I want you to hold on to with the name of Jesus is know this, that COVID-19 is going to bow. Death has already bowed. The grave has already bowed. Sickness has already bowed. Lazarus was dead and he said, Lazarus, come forth. It, it bowed. Water being turned into wine. The impossible had bowed. I want you to think of Jesus this way. Jesus is our peace. Yeah, that means there can be no unrest and commotion anywhere in the world that can shake that peace from you. That's what's on offer at the, ta at the table. Jesus can be our joy. We won't need any other joy. That's why we say the joy of the Lord is our strength. We know that Jesus has been the atonement for our sins because the Bible said for all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. So we need that atonement to be made. And if you heard about Israel leaving Egypt in the Ten Commandments and the fact that Jesus died at Calvary, what he did was he died and his blood was shed and that blood was shed and it paid our remission of sins became real it paid a price because we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity we'd all failed god just as much as we're failing one another even the way we run the world we failed it that's why there's a pandemic so we needed someone to say sorry in a way that god would accept jesus did that with his blood and his blood if it's if we're under his blood it gives us a protection but it also speaks on our behalf jesus his name he is our sanctifier so he purifies us again and again and again. For us, Jesus is our shepherd. Even if no one else cared for you, he would care for you faithfully day and night. Jesus is also your song and your song of praise. So the name of Jesus puts a song in your heart, which comes out of your mouth. So we say, I love Jesus and Jesus has saved me. Thank you, Lord, for everything you've done. Jesus is also our income. If everything else fails, Jesus will come through for us. He's also our insurance, because if we put Jesus in our back pocket and accept that he's paid the direct debits for us, uh, he pays them every month and he never misses a payment, just so one day we could sit down and say, Jesus, your Lord, 
come into my life. I want to be saved. So I'm going to ask you just to repeat this prayer after me. I just, and I'm joining you. I pray if anyone's in the room with you, they join you. And I need you. Listen, trust me on this. Yeah. I'm just a man, but I've done it and it works. Speak the prayer out of your mouth. The devil doesn't want you to. I can assure you, if you might think, what's he on about? I've heard that before. I've tried that before. It doesn't work. Today is going to be different because we're looking at Jesus differently. I want you to say the prayer out of your mouth and believe that it's actually working on your behalf. So right now, just pray this with me to ensure that you are saved, to ensure that you make it to heaven, to ensure that you can go through this life without fear and nothing will rock your world anymore. Jesus will make you ready for everything. If you choose to believe and if you confess with your mouth that he is the son of God and that he rose from the dead, then you shall be saved. So Jesus is our savior, saver of everything. And he is our salvation. So just pray this with me. Do this and let's see a big change come in our lives today. Just repeat this after me. Dear Jesus, I declare right now that you are Lord. I declare that you rose from the dead. I declare that I want you, Jesus, to be my Lord and my Savior. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse my heart. Visit me with your Holy Spirit right now. Visit me, Lord, with your peace right now. Heal my body in the name of Jesus right now. I declare that you are my Lord. I declare that you are my Savior. I declare that believing in you, I am born again. And my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. While I'm on this earth, I will serve you. I will love you. I will seek you. I will read a Bible and I'll contact Yvonne Michelle to get details of where I can serve you. Thank you, Jesus, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for dying. Thank you for resurrecting from the grave. Thank you for carrying the blood on the mercy seat. Thank you for doing it just for me. I receive your saving grace. I receive your, your love. And I say right now, out of my mouth, Jesus, the risen son of God, is Lord. Amen. I pray that is activated in your life right now. And I prophesy over you right now. In the name of Jesus, you will be saved. And if you're sick, you will be healed. And if you're fearful, you will no longer be having any fear in your life because you will have the power of God, his love, and a sound mind in Jesus' name will be your eternal portion on this earth until you see Jesus face to face. Amen. 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 Guys, I just want, let me just let the www dots go. Those of you who are listening on Luton Urban Radio, we've come to the end of the show. Um, I do hope that you've got some value from this show. Uh, do join us again. Join me here. I'm back here tomorrow between the hours of 10 and midnight for After Dark. So if you want to know about relationships, then come to the relationship show. But I do want to thank you for being here and thank our guests. Guys, just stay there a minute. That my guests don't stay here. I'm just going to let uh, the www go. I will see you back here tomorrow. Thank you for joining and stay safe. Okay, I just had to, to um, let that go. So, um, Guys, I want to thank you. We've gone a little bit over time, but I didn't want to rush off um, just because we've the www dot have gone. I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for your love, your care for the community. Um, I will be inviting you guys back again. It's an incredible show. I do thank you for doing this. Um, and I do hope that... Um, 
this has touched someone's life and I hope that it's given some more understanding. We know that not everybody's going to agree with what we believe. Um, but this isn't really about that. This isn't about defending uh, Christianity. This is about bringing up the issues and dealing with them and bringing about change. And that's, you know, it's very easy to point the finger. And, and as it's my job to ask the questions as I did today and say, well, where is the church? This, that's you did a my great job. job. I that's think you did a great job. job. I, I, I don't, I'm not offended by your questions in one bit. I think no, they're no. important questions. And I think that um, they need to be asked, they need to be said, because you know what, in a way you have to ask the questions that you know your audience, they have those questions in their head anyway. Yeah. So you have to almost in a way, to, I hate to use that phrase, but it's almost like to be devil's advocate, just to, to draw out the answers. So no, I think you did a very good job. Very, very good job. Thank you. We've got some comments. Um, uh, Patricia Young says, excellent show. Um, Yvonne, Dr. Phil and Dr. Hugh praying for those unbelievers right now really appreciative of what you've done. Um, Barbara Kahneman saying amazing show, so relevant right now. Um, also, you know, there's so many comments are saying good show, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, Amen. we love you and you know, love is what makes the world go round. And we know that today some seeds have been sown. They've been planted and sown. And that's the name of the game, but it's not a game, but we know that we want to bring as much comfort as we can to people and let them know there is an alternative. That's right. If you have nothing to believe in and you're lost, there is an alternative because right. Christ is there and he's oh, just man. waiting. Yeah. So thank you so much for today's show. Pleasure. Pleasure. And like I said, anytime you guys have anything, if you, uh, you said you've got a book coming, um, Phil, I know you're doing lots with um, Soul 100 TV. So anytime you want to come back on the show, just give me a shout. And I would always be willing to fit you in and do an interview with you guys and just bring the gospel that one step further. Bless All right, so, guys, those of you who are on Facebook, I want to thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for the questions. Thank you for your love. Thank you for, for following. Thank you for supporting. Do remember tomorrow after dark. After dark is growing. After dark is growing, guys. So if you are single or even married and you want to give some advice if, uh, for those who are single, if you are lonely, if you want to create new friendships, come to After Dark. We talk about everything to do with relationships. That's relationships from family to partnerships. Wow. So, How come you didn't invite us to that? Oh, you can come. <laughs> you can come. come. We've got one, one pastor who's with us every week. His name is... Um, Patrick Solomon, he's okay. been married 37 years I, I know and he, he gives advice. Yeah, uh, It just started out as a rant really of us, me saying, if this lockdown is how life is going to be, how is it going to be for singles? How is it going to be for me on oh, my days? Have I left it too late kind yeah. of thing? And so people were coming on and they were placing their comments. So it's grown. It's grown from a radio show into a TV show, which is now Love Zone, which is on media medianet.com. Um, so I'm there every Sunday um, doing this relationship show called The Love Zone. So, mm -hmm. But I also have this to help people find partners. It's a different way. We're, we're not doing the dating site thing. We tried that, that didn't like that. So we're doing, you know, if you do something the same, you get the same result, right? So we're doing something different to bring about a different result. Good. So you're very welcome to come. We'll be right here tomorrow. <laughs> I'll send you the, the Zoom. We do it on Zoom. I, I, I elect I elect my friend, Dr. Phil. He's he's, <laughs> he's much better at relationships than he I am. Right? get this thing here. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. But this is why. Because uh, the thing is, this, this is why you're married. You found your partner. Yeah, so how yeah. did you go about doing that? What were the yeah, steps? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, um, you know, there are some of us out here like, yeah. like the believers and non-believers. There's some singles yeah. out here that are a bit lost and need yeah. a bit of help. Yeah. So if you do have any suggestions, we'd be happy to hear. Yeah, More yeah. than happy to hear. Tomorrow we're asking about the three, the three crucial things that you ask or you look for in a partner. What are the three things? that you want in your relationship. Oh, I'll, send an email. I'll send an email in. 
I'll send an email for you so you can read that okay. out. I'll, I'll give you my answer to those three. And then you okay. can talk about it tomorrow. Oh, we, we will welcome it. We welcome it. Um, so, guys, thank you so much. Thanks for having Don't me. Don't forget, guys, eight to nine o'clock tomorrow for morning inspiration. Be there. Get some inspiration to start your day the right way. Okay. We're out of here. Okay. Good night, guys. We're Bye. lucky night. Bye-bye. Take care. Be Good safe. Night. Guys, thanks again. Ciao well, for now. Bye. Well done. Well done. Okay. Well, done. Okay. Yeah, not sure how you work this now. Button's we're supposed yeah. to press. I think it's. Hold on, don't go.